In this video, I'm going to talk about three different kind of 3D printers. Two of them are from Mingda and one is of Sunloom. Getting the latest news and updates right here on Zachary's 3D Prints. Hello, this is Zachary. If you're not familiar with the news and updates and closer look videos, it's me going over several 3D printers that were announced and going to be released any soon. And I will give my opinion about these machines. So the Magician X was a printer that were a lot of ideas about one of them was that the base was made out of plastics and the whole gantry was sitting attached to of these aluminum extrusions within the base i don't know if it is a big deal or what if you have something like this you should have more rigidity in your designs in my opinion and also there was something with the direct drive extruder with the strain gauge and some other things but let's take a closer look to the max and the pro of this magician x 3d printer the magician max let's Cut to the chase. If I hear the word max, I would think about the maximum size. For 479 US dollars, it's not the biggest printer. The other one, it's going to come. But what can you expect of this 3D printer? It has a printing volume of 320 times 320 times 400 millimeter. A beautiful 3D render, photoshopped model in there, not a model printed on the machine, but okay. If you are looking to the base of this 3D printer, it looks very similar like the base of the Magician X. I think also this base is made out of plastic. I hope that Mingda learns from the reviews from the Magician X and changes several things in this design and also in the Magician Pro. What can I say already about this? It runs over two 2020 aluminum extrusions for the Y-axis. The X-axis gantry where the carriage is running over. It looks a little bit funny. It looks different than I used to see. I don't know if it is 2040 and a 2040 like that, that you get a little L shape, but we will see. There are belt tensioners for the X and also for the Y axis, so that is very nice. If the belt is a little bit loose, you can always tension it and getting some better print results. Also a handle on the top of the Z axis gantry, looking nice. Auto bed leveling, one touch smart auto leveling, fast assembly, multi connection, this support USB C SD card, and U disk, a USB thumb drive, and ultra silent printing. So, what can you expect from this machine? Print resolution up to 0.1 millimeter, uh, nozzle diameter 0.4. Maybe they are changeable, I'm not sure. Print speed 200 millimeters per second, but recommended is 60 to 80 millimeters per second. Supported filaments PLA, TPU, ABS, PEG, wood, and other types of filament that can have the temperature up to 260 degrees for the nozzle and for your heated bed is 110 degrees. The voltage of this 3D printer runs on 24 volts for the whole printer and it's a 350 watts power supply integrated in the base. So out of bed leveling with 16 points, precise leveling, ready to print. I think six screws to put in there and then you are good to go. Silent printing, as you can see, you can sleep while this printer is printing with a decibel between the 40 and 50 decibels. So it's always people sleeping with those printers. A glass bed, fourth generation glass bed, nice dual cooling fan. So on the left and on the right hand side, what I did notice is the printing speed is faster which can reach 100 millimeters per second so on the top they are saying 200 millimeters per second for printing speed but the maximum here is 100 millimeters per second with the 60 80 millimeters per second for a printing speed then this is the maximum that you can go dual gear direct extrusion i hope everything is made out of metal instead of plastic you don't want to have plastic things in your extruder automatic filament detection broken material can be automatically detected filament run out sensor and for the dual z axis you have a timing belt in between the lead screws to keep your lead screws in sync. There is a built-in toolbox where you can put all your tools in for the printer so if, if there's something that you need to do the tools are 
right in front of you. TMC stepper drivers, but they don't mention which type of TMC stepper drivers. Maybe the 2209 or the 2208, they don't say it. Cortex M4 CPU chip is in there. A 32-bit board with 168 mm, what? But if you are wondering, I can tell already it's the same one as they use in the magician x so this one is 479 us dollars and so the next one is the magician pro not max but this one is the maximum volume pro would say that it is more advanced but it is just bigger the design is also looking a little bit different because what can we see based upon this picture there is a big plate where the controller box where the power supply unit is mounted in is put on top and your whole x-axis gantry is mounted to there as well so 400 times 400 times 400 is the printing volume with also some tie rods on the backside to give this printer more rigidity i don't know how thick that the plate is and if the plate is made of out of aluminum or out of metal but i hope they did i also see here a optical sensor is on the located on the on the bottom it's pretty similar like we see on the anycubic viper so you can let your creativity undergo loose on this machine you have a bigger printing volume i hope that maybe mingda would ever send something like this to me but i guess they don't do that little specifications about this printer printing volume 400 400 400 the nozzle diameter is 0 0.4 just like the other one the print speed is 200 millimeters or less recommended is between the 60 and 80 millimeters per second supported filaments pla tpu abs I would fill in as well as a uh, PEGI and other filaments that has a temperature less than 260 degrees. The uh, bed temperature is 110 degrees maximum. 32 bit boards, the Cortex M4 CPU, just like the other two from the Magician series. So this printer is for a price of 639 US dollars. I will put the link in the description of this video if you are interested in buying this printer. So Sundu S9 Plus, a brand new 3D printer, a, a well thought designed 3D printer, if I may say it, because this printer, it has something special, but I will talk about it a little bit later. So this has a do double tie rod design. Everything you see on this printer, it's very minimalistic, but I think it doesn't mean that it is performing less good. Double tie rod design makes this printer more rigid because this printer has a bigger printing volume. If we have 2040 aluminum extrusions on the base, but also for the Z axis where the X axis is running over, that has a 2020 aluminum extrusion also on the top. Doesn't really matter that last part. You can leave that out. I do need to say that the bed runs over two. 2020 aluminum extrusions and also making sure that your base is being as uh, sturdy as possible one of the other cool things that i do like about this machine it has a filament dryer integrator so you put your filament inside of this filament dryer which is also connected with the base of this s9 plus and your filament runs from the filament dry box into the extruder which is a Bowden uh, style extruder. So here's the extruder, here's the uh, hot end carriage, and then you can print your stuff. The printing volume of this 3D print is 310 times 310 times 400 millimeters. So it's a large printer printing volume. It has a 4.3 inch LCD touchscreen, a USB type B connector, 
I think this is a render and a micro SD card slot on the front side. 16 point automatic bed leveling on a glass bed and a dual Z lead screw setup. I think if you are going for a bigger printing volume, I think it's a great addition to have a dual Z lead screw setup instead of just a single one. A clock detection. I don't know which kind of clock detection where it is but if i hear the word clock detection it has to do with the hot end on the moment you have a clock then somewhere in the line from the bowling tube it, it will be pushed and then it stops printing something like that the s9 plus plug treatment flowchart how this system works plug detected enter in standby so Okay, I don't know what that standby means. Handling plugs, print continues. So I don't know if this has to do with um, power outage or power resume. This print is a little bit louder. It's at 60 decibel, but you can still sleep with your rubber ducky that you get from BQ. When I see the auto bed leveling sensor, it does remind me of a BL touch kind of probe that uses 16.2 to level the bed. Uh, resume after power failure. Here are battery indicators. I don't know what Sundu means with the battery indicators, but I think if there is no power, then the print stops. And then after power is put up back on, then you can continue with your print. However, I never, or maybe I did mention that in the past, but if you have a power outage, your printer stops heating as well. If you have a glass bed, your print pops off because of the cooling difference between the glass bed and your print. You will get a model that is going to be loose on the build plate. Chassis heating? I think that they mean a heated bed from zero to 60 degrees Celsius in two minutes. That was the Sunlu S9 Plus. This printer is going to cost around the 459 US dollars. I will put the link in the description of this video. This video is supported by these amazing Patreon supporters. Fixem Dude, Carl Fenton, YJ and Nonstick. Thank you guys for your awesome support. Did you know by the way that this channel has also YouTube memberships? Check the button under this video for more information. There are three different kind of types. PLA filament, PET G filament and polycarbonate filament as tiers for supporting this channel. If you're still watching this video, thank you. You are amazing. On the end card, there are some recommended videos worth watching. Please like this video, share this video with other people and on social media and we will see each other next time. Peace. Bye bye.